and welcome back everyone to the underwater tribe live show or not live if you're watching it on the post you're watching replay. The recording yes happy monday happy monday everyone mike is right now monday everywhere in the world uh let's see what time it is it's uh, 5 p.m yeah yeah come everywhere. on i hope by now everywhere. everyone made it everywhere. it's mine first comment in uh, steve uh, you're still on the top of the list good to see you over there steve Wright. steve Wright is there always the first yeah one. it's oh. uh, it's uh, between them it's uh, yuhani or steve uh, come on yuhani you can make it before steve next time let's see if You've you can go who can be first you know, <laughs> get that you comment know, you know, ready you read those, those different comments on like uh, forum you know like articles and mm -hmm. they have comment for and there's always someone saying first First, very, very yes, young. yes, yes. I like, I like, I like it. Thanks, guys, for the support, and uh, th great to see you there. Hope everybody had a good Monday. weekend. We're gonna have a great week ahead of us, uh, don't oh, we? Wait. Yes, we're gonna have like uh, many interesting interviews. We're gonna have today Helen Samson coming up uh, in a few minutes uh, a few after minutes. we finish this our little bit of an yep. intro between us uh, and then we're gonna have uh, Kay Burn Lim coming yep. in on, on Wednesday. Wednesday and then we're gonna have uh, Richard Pyle and Brian Green coming up on, on Friday. Friday so exactly. it's gonna be a very exciting week I'm impressed that you came up with that without even having anything any notes open that you got all, all yeah all three it's, just it's like the, that is the pressure of being live I, Mike, am impressed. You know, like, I can perform under pressure ah. yes and uh, oh, oh now I'm blushing, now. man. Look now at that, I'm becoming up. all red. Like, hey guys, if you're joining us uh, uh, live on the show, yes, please let me know on the comments uh, who is there and let us know also where you are uh, watching from. It's always interesting to see which part of the world you are watching True. from. And it's also interesting that the different times we get it, obviously, we're, we're getting different people, but we different times we get, you know, each week we'll, we'll get. A bunch of new people from somewhere else You're like yeah. oh where'd that person come from mm -mm -mm. so the show is getting out there people are seeing it from different places so that's good to know mm -mm. good to see so a great week Jason's coming up Hello, Jason. all uh mostly about uh, uh filmography like this week it's everyone all? is yep. uh is a filmmaker underwater and uh even and a couple of fish geeks at the end they're also videos. filmmakers yeah in fact so, brian is just finishing his film school we got some uh, nice video to show you in the bag, so make sure that you tune in. If you are new to the Underwater Tribe, uh, I'm Luca. Here we go. Mike. Mike. And uh, we are here on Facebook. We are also on a YouTube channel. We are live on YouTube also as, uh, uh, as we speak we are. right now. And um, you can find uh, this is the live show. Uh, is our show number 38. Eight. 38 yeah if I'm not mistaken so if That's you impressive. if it's the first time you're watching you can also and if you like it you can check out the other 37 uh, show that we did before on the playlist on our YouTube channel make sure to oh, subscribe God. and follow us on Facebook guys we always appreciate uh, your support we've got some new viewers this week the now channels. as well we got Kate coming in from South Africa Mike from Australia thank you thank you Mike yeah, thanks, for, Mike, uh, for the support. For uh, giving. the support, thank you very much. And Laura Lee uh, from yes, uh, Arkansas, a bit oh, early right. for you. Yes, that's gonna be five. That's what in I was morning. curious to see. It's like, do we have already somebody from North America? Yeah, right? because Our it's very early there. in the morning. Good five to see you there, the Laura. Morning. Good morning. Hope you have a nice cup of coffee with you over there. And then Cape Town, eleven a.m. The all right. UK. Oh, they're Train. all right in the UK and South Africa. Cool. Decent civilized time of day for them. Right. There was something interesting happening on our Facebook page. There was. Like, uh, let's have a look at that because we just posted like uh, Only an a hour or yeah, yeah, an hour, two hours is boom. going mad. Yes, we didn't is. really expect to receive like uh, such a good turnaround in uh, such a short time. And the question was very simple. Which What's one your favorite animal? That's is your marine favorite animal. marine animal underwater? And that's sounds very simple but it's not very simple well, what's interesting is that there's <laughs> hardly anybody that's actually said the 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 second the the, the same animal has not come up more than once really mm. i think octopus has come octopus up a couple of times. seems like to be a little bit of a winner look at that lenny yep. is just octopus we got and some lenny's up early as well manta rays 5 a.m for lenny we Maybe got six, a large school four. of fish. It's always nice to swim inside the large Groupers school of fish. From Julia. Octopus, coconut octopus, manta rays, so two and more octopus, eagle rays. 
Lionfish, uh, Leafy Dragon. I like this one, very original from Adam here. Blue Need Sea Spider. Put a photo of it as well. Click the on little the thing sea spider the thing. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this one in Sangian by Sangian Volcano. Okay. It didn't have the red though. It yeah, was beautiful. blue and transparent. Very nice. I don't like spiders. This, you, this is for tiny. You, how are you when it comes to not underwater but land or, or even underwater? Snakes or spiders? Which would you prefer? A spider. Oh, I'm Big the opposite. Time. I can't stand no. spiders. No, 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 man. Oh, I, I have right few spi here. I have few snakes coming into my house and like you know on the ties <laughs> they looks like <laughs> slipping everywhere like it's, it's very slippery. No, and, I'm, I don't mind uh, snakes. But yes, spiders. Yeah, heebie-jeebies. I deal with both. And Leafy then sea dragon. Did we get the Leafy, Leafy sea, sea dragon? Blue ring octopus, yellow box fish. I like that too from Leilani. Very nice. Ah, yeah, oh, look shrimp. at this little picture here. This Blue is dragonette. a nice one. Yeah. Dactylopus, Dactylopus. You know, when I read this, I didn't see the picture. I just read the comment. Dactylopus, Dactylopus. I was thinking like, now we're gonna dinosaur? get like a velociraptor or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Sounds like a dinosaur. Yeah, it doesn't really gobby. look like much of a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. It's a cousin of the mandarin fish. Yeah, frogfish. Frogfish. Here we go. Here we go. We have two. Hey, we need to come up with a name. Don't forget about that. Yeah, well, you know, we've asked about names uh, and people have an answer. Titan Triggerfish, uh, Christopher, Dolphins. you must have had some interesting Let's see your scars, Christopher. This. I'm sure you must have scars. And more and Titan. more coming up. More frog fish and interesting sharks. Interesting that Yopi, our dive guide, is mentioning harlequin shrimp. Yes. It's, if you ever you actually just with watch you. the harlequin shrimp, you know, everybody looks at them and most people that we're with, they're looking at them through the camera. But if you ever just stop and watch them, especially if you see them feeding, doesn't matter. Sometimes they're eating a regular starfish or maybe they're a brittle star or something like that. And just watch them. And they've got very cool little, uh, they, they move around quite a bit. It's very cool complex uh, marine animal. Which one is yours? Oh, that's a good question. That's very difficult. I, I, I'm surprised how people could come up, you know, with something so quick and say, that's it. That's my favorite marine animal. I would probably say something that people here have, you know, it's not something I've had much. Unfortunately, I've not had much. Um, interaction with unlike some of our guests this week have had but whales whales nobody has come up with whale yet mm -mm. did anybody come up with whale i didn't see a whale mm -hmm. maybe it's not that easy to find them you know like um, <laughs> they're small you know yeah. they're tough to spot you know i never seen a whale underwater i've seen briefly out in the distance with a yeah. back but i mean it. in the water i've never had a close-up I think, you know, when all this uh, fini pandemic is over, we need to go to, to watch to some go, whale fight. We need to go and talk with uh, Eddie Pendito. Yeah, we do the if whale If you guys haven't seen Eddie. the one that Eddie did with us a few weeks back, he's got some uh, great mm -hmm. whale encounters. I think I think we need to spill some, fill some spots on the old Pendito. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a cool trip. Mm. Well, diving in the morning, we're watching in the afternoon. We're watching in the afternoon. In the afternoon. That, I like that sort of receipt. You want to know which one was mine? What is your favorite? My one was Oceanic White Tip before Brett Gilliam was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then after now you heard of so the sure story the that White happened Chips during anymore? Brett Gilliam, I said, okay, maybe maybe not the Oceanic White. But yeah, I think uh, sharks, probably tiger shark. I think there was yeah. another shark attack in Australia. The other day. Yeah, it sometimes happen. There are always mistakes, you know? Yep. All right, so let's uh, on this positive note, yes. why don't we just uh, <laughs> the shark attack. move straight Come on. into the interview? Well, with... why don't we talk a little bit about Helen? Yeah, before Helen. we get into the interview, tell us who she is, Luca. Helen, she works as an um, assistant producer. Yep. Yes. In uh, what's it? Because what's Bristol. the Bristol? In Bristol, yes, that's the the capital. Now you, now I'm not prepared. Natural, <laughs> natural history documentaries yeah. is the now word. You're making me for. like you put me there on the spot. Uh -oh. and, yes. natural history documentaries. And you wrote it there in the description. Her new company that she just moved yep. to. That's why she used to be a silverback, but now she is at. Do, do, place do, 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 called do, do, do. True to Nature Productions, exactly. which I think is quite new. But they do uh, they, they do produce also for uh, they're, they're starting a, a new one about sharks coming up. But her latest one is the dolphins one. And uh, if anybody's out there that has do, uh, Disney Nature, we Disney put it in the link. A, there. Yeah, we did. It's actually Disney has a, a new couple of big ones coming out. One called Dolphins. Mm -hmm. and she is uh, hey, on, Reef, let I me open say. this up and she is uh, this is something pretty cool it's a new channel too yeah. apparently 
Like, it's a similar one to... Uh, and there, she was mentioning in that, I don't remember if uh, during the interview, but she was mentioning that uh, is actually, they give you seven days free of uh, um, free of charge. And this one is Dolphin Reef, yep. which is one that she's been working on. And we we'll we'll actually talk, we'll talk about talk that, about that uh, later on. And fantastic work and very interesting to know, like the technique that they use uh, to film um this sort of uh, documentaries. It's interesting. You get so many different um, choices now with online entertainment. You've got Amazon. You've got Disney. You've got um, what you call it, Look Netflix. That. That's all incredible. these kind of things. So you've got a choice, and uh, Disney has has pretty much got all the top documentaries on nature documentaries. Mm -mm. Uh, it's a really good one, yeah. especially if you've got kids. And look the quality like over there is super super good quality coming up so if you haven't signed up yet you can have a free trial on uh, the new disney plus uh, channel and uh, seven days valid uh, and as ellen she was saying like she just um, she joined it at the beginning like right. seven days free trial yep. and during that it was so cool that she, that she, she signed, signed up. up for the whole thing it's funny because they produce things for uh, for this channel but still they have also to sign up for right, it of <laughs> independently of course yeah all That's right, some but amazing visuals, and she'll talk about some of these scenes as well mm -mm. while we uh, during the interview. Shall we go to it? Let's go for it. All right, let's go straight into the interview with Helen Samson. And uh, here we go. We have uh, Helen Samson. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Where are you right now, Helen? Um, I'm in Bristol in the UK. Okay, which so is where Bristol, that we just learned uh, recently, is the capital of uh, the epicenter. The epicenter of uh, productions for natural history in the world. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, it became the epicenter, I believe, through uh, the BBC Natural History um, Unit. Um, originally being here and then it sort of built a whole industry around it with lots of independent production companies so so we are sorry sorry go, go ahead i was going to say we are considered to um produce the the best in the business so to speak mostly because of david attenborough i guess <laughs> okay is he also from B bristol uh, he's not from Bristol, no, he's from London, but um, obviously, yeah, we produce all of his documentaries, so um, he is a legend yes, throughout the world. Yes, he is big time, big time. Did you get to meet him? Uh, I've met him a couple of times, yes, and he has said, hello, Helen, which I was very excited about. Yeah, yeah that, that's <laughs> all he has to say, and he will go like, oh, yes, yeah. thanks. <laughs> It's a bit embarrassing though, because he's so um, brilliant and legendary that you then don't really know what to say in response. So you end up sort of looking like a rabbit in headlights and smiling without knowing really what to say in response. But yeah, it was nice to meet him for sure. He's supposed to be very down to earth and a, a, actually a really nice guy. No, no real ego. Yeah, absolutely. I think he still doesn't really see himself as a celebrity after all these years. Um, he just sees himself as a, a conservationist, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, he sort of tries to avoid that celebrity status. Um, and he's, yeah, he's a very, very nice yeah. man. And he's amazing. Uh, like uh, we were mentioning this also um, in another segment that we had uh, previously. It's like the, 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 the recent, uh, you know, uh, words that he had during the awards of Blue Planet 2 and so on, you know, like really advocating for that uh, conservation and um, maris, marine plastic pollutions and the animals that are suffering. That was incredible, like the effect that he had, you know, by saying those words and by being him saying those words uh, really, really touched uh, many, many people and uh, made changes, you know, for the better, yeah. for better, yeah. Well, I think, I mean, he's a brilliant example of someone who has grown up through all of the transitions that we've had yeah. environmentally from when he was a young man and traveling around the world with, you know, a plethora of wildlife at his, at his feet. And over the last sort of 30, 40 years, he's seen utter destruction, if yeah. you like. And um, he can be the biggest... Um, advocate for how things have changed over the years yeah, um, and i think he's very passionate about it and he'd like to 
you know, he'd, he'd like to make sure that he can change people's attitudes um, for the future before yeah. it's too late, I guess. Yeah, and uh, it's incredible, right? Uh, like, we are from the same generation. Uh, you and I, I'm not talking for him, he's from different generations. <laughs> <laughs> like Easy that. now, but fella. how many times, like, uh, so we, we've been around the block for a while and uh, traveling the world like this, and how many times we heard, you know, like, over here used to be like this, but now it's like that, you know? <laughs> like, when I was in the Maldives, they used to tell me, like, oh, yeah, 10 years ago over here was... Full of sharks everywhere and i was like oh it's quite cool now but uh, it used to be better <laughs> you know yeah. like that i know i've always wanted to um jump in a time machine and go back yeah. about 150 200 yeah. years and um i wish we could do that and scuba yeah. dive on in the ocean before really the oceans were touched in any way by us and it would yeah. just be amazing Right. For the people that uh, don't know you yet, Ellen, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, what uh, what you're doing now. Um, okay, so I work in wildlife documentary film. Um, I've been in the industry for nearly nine years now and worked across two feature films um, for Disney. And um, now I'm working uh on a shark series three-part series for sky which has just started in production so okay um i specialize in underwater i've sort of been led down that pathway um and so most of the filmmaking that i've been involved in has been um to do with the oceans and underwater filming so that's my specialization when uh, we first met um, i think it was 2008 uh, or, or so 2009 in, uh, in in sulawesi you were actually doing some uh, terrestrial work there you were already working in, co in conservation tell us a little bit about that yeah that's right so um i've actually had a bit of a strange uh, sort of career path because i used to work in investment banking recruitment um and um, decided that wasn't the right career for me and ended up going back to university at the age of 28 to do a, um, a degree in a master's degree in conservation biology. And that led me out to Sulawesi um, where I set up along with um, a colleague from the university, Plymouth University. Um, we set up a conservation program for the critically endangered macaque, black crested macaque in North Sulawesi. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so at the time I really was interested in working in conservation and I got this opportunity to go out and set up this project um, with the Black Crested Macaque. Um, and at that stage I hadn't really done much scuba diving, so um, terrestrial was definitely my aim at the current time. Um, and so I, I worked on that and set up, it's called Sul Sulamat Kanyaki, which uh, in Indonesian means save the macaque yeah. um, and the project still runs today uh, which is great um, but it's very much about trying to conserve the rainforests of uh, Sulawesi mm -hmm. and particularly the black crested macaque but also the other wildlife that lives within it which is very much under threat um, currently yeah. so Sulawesi being one of the the biggest uh, rainforest uh, actually out there in the world in general but really a threat uh, because of uh, burning for plantations uh, and, and so on and yeah uh, um, yeah exactly it's really threatened um, mostly also uh, a lot of the bigger species have been hunted out because of traditional hunting practices so mm -hmm. Um, it's very much a case of trying to um, educate the locals into how they can gain their sustenance from other means in order to protect these vulnerable species. That's right. Because I think the, the black macaques, they're endemic only to that area, correct? Yeah, that's right. So um, there are different species of macaque throughout Sulawesi. Um, they've got a really interesting evolutionary um, pathway actually starting in the south and then moving up to the north and the black crested macaques are only endemic to the north part okay. um, and they only live in very few forests in the north so mm -hmm. obviously um, yeah so they're they are critically endangered for that reason it's kind of their fault for living on an island in only a very small area but <laughs> We still need to protect them yeah, if we can. Yeah, and it's actually quite a scene when you are there in Manado and um, 
for instance, you see like all these uh, palm, palm trees, palm trees from the coastline going up, 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 and you just see the tips, which is still uh, of the mountains, which is still like uh, the the prime rainforest. Uh, it's quite touching. And it's, it's actually very close to the city. It only takes you 20 minutes, I guess, yeah, to drive yeah. from downtown to Manado. Yeah. Well, maybe more than that. But, but from Maine, Manado, or Bitung, and you're in the Tancoco National Park. So it's very, very close mm-hmm. to civilization. We, so yeah, no yeah. wonder they're... No wonder they're endangered. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other thing is obviously with growing pop- human populations, the the forests are losing their um, corridors between each and being surrounded independently by right. lots of uh, community growing communities. Um, and you know, it's not the locals' fault. It's just economic growth of yeah. the human population, and that blocks off the ability for them also to move into different areas. Right. Yeah. Um, Choices of governments most of the time to to de- to decide to develop using their primary resources of the land and and so. Unfortunately, on. yes. Yeah. I you know I think governments uh, have a lot to answer for across the world for the destruction of the environment, which they take as secondary to their economic mm-hmm. growth. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's unfortunate, yeah. You know, like now that we're living this uh, sort of a situation with the virus and so on, and we don't want to go there too much about it, but <laughs> everybody say like, yeah, yeah, you can be an expert on Facebook like that, but you have to listen to the real experts. Yeah, but you know what? Real experts have been doing this that we just talk about now, you know, like they've been exploiting uh, uh, environments uh, for economical gain, you know, like, and so why can I really trust? <laughs> you know, too much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, exactly. it's very contradictory, but uh, yeah. Know. You know, the one, I mean, I know we don't want to get into this too much, but the one thing that um, initially when this COVID-19 lockdown happened worldwide, I was very excited by the prospect of the oceans having a break from human beings. And then I started to learn and speak to some scientists in the Galapagos, for example, who are saying that actually it's the worst thing that could have happened because it's allowing illegal fishermen to go into protected areas and start to hunt out um, or fish out the sharks especially but other species from these areas where they would otherwise be have some form of policing Um, and that really upset me because I thought that the oceans would kind of bounce back over this year and it would be amazing but we thought exactly the same the narrative out there was this one too, you know, we start to see these posts going viral, oh, the ocean is taking, uh, the environment is taking a break, we start to see the Himalaya chain uh, from uh, yeah. Kathmandu, you know, we never seen that before, you know, like, and it was yeah. like, yes, yes, we need this, and then the bad people are out there. Yeah, Man. exactly, <laughs> and all the sharks have been fished yeah. out. And then I said, and I okay. Yeah, and I'm making a series on sharks and we're hoping to start filming later yeah, in the year and yeah. they've all gone, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> and it doesn't take long to make a huge damage, you know, like uh, it just takes a few bombs to destroy like uh, an entire reef, you know, and so a day of bombing can destroy an entire reef uh, system yeah. of uh, an island, you know, like that's crazy, yeah. that's crazy. Talking about uh, so the, the, the mi- migration from, uh, from the land uh, to more to the ocean. You were already a diver when we met in in Sulawesi, but then also you decided to was maybe also like a chance for you to have a little bit of a break, right? Go diving when you were yeah. running this uh, project. Exactly. So um, whilst I was uh, working on Sulamak Kanyaki, I um, there were very few expats um, out there actually, and obviously Luca, you were one of them, and um, a couple of others who ran the Eco Divers uh, Resort. Um, Kerry and Jim who yeah. sort of took me under their wing and um, they yeah and with them each weekend I started to dive um, scuba dive which I hadn't done for many years I'd done my open water when I was 18 in Australia during my gap year and then it was another sort of 10 years after that before I got in the water in Sulawesi and um, so with Kerry and Jim, um, Yanni, um, thank you to them, I started to dive the Lembe Strait mostly every weekend, um, which I'm sure most people are aware of, yeah. um, being one of the, the best critter sites in the world. Um, and actually, initially, I thought it was a bit weird because I was just diving in mud and I wasn't really, right. I wanted to 
what's really going on here <laughs> so i don't understand and then got my eye in after a while and then got completely hooked on it um and yeah and sort of just in, engulfed myself into the underwater world and realized how spectacular it was and for yeah. me more spectacular than anything you could see on land because it's all in your face you know if you can find it which um, you can do much more easily than you can find you know a really cool um lizard in a rainforest um yeah. Yeah, you, I, there was just so many things to find. Um, and then on top of that, I also uh, have to do a big shout out to Christian Loder, who was my best friend out there. Um, yeah. And him and I dived a lot together at the weekends. And he also um, was working for Scuba Zoo at the time. And he had a spare SLR and strobes uh, that he lent to me for practically the whole year that we were there together. Um, and he taught me macro photography. In yeah, its okay. and he's a, he is a brilliant uh, underwater photographer. We had Christian here at the podcast, uh, uh, I think yeah. was last year or the year before that, yeah. maybe 2018. Yeah. And we're still in touch, uh, such, a, such a great guy, you know, and, uh, and he loves yeah. macro too. So he loved to go up in the Lembe Strait. And I think also maybe you had the chance to, in, in an environment like Lembe, you can, you get to see like lots of uh, animal behavior that uh, would be uh, otherwise difficult to see in others' environment. Like in Bunaken, we could see like, you know, the pretty fish, uh, maybe a turtle. Yeah, of course the animals were doing something, but in Lembe you could see them you could see them really like maybe mating or spawning, you know, and. Exactly. Yeah. And also, I mean, I, to be honest, I spent a lot of my time trying to find peacock mantis shrimp and then just um, following them everywhere. And um, I'm, yeah, I've got a little bit of a, an obsession with peacock right. mantis shrimp, with which peacock. I took into the Disney dolphin film that I worked on um, and insisted that we had to have them as a character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, because they are amazing. I so, like your personality too. Great attitude from the peacock, Manti Shri. I think they're aliens. I think they're aliens come down from another planet, like yeah, Mars, yeah. and they, yeah. they're going to slowly take over the world at mm. some point. Do you have the eyes for it? <laughs> yeah. And uh, let me show here, There's actually, one. I have one of uh, the peacock, uh, Manti Shri, that is. you were mentioning. Where did you film uh, this, uh, where, well, the picture here, where did you film for Disney the, the peacock, Manti Shri? Which location did you choose for that? Lembe Strait. Oh, oh. Uh, yes, Lembe Strait. It was Lembe. Okay, cool. Oh, so. Yeah, so so I was a um, um, researcher turned assistant producer on the Disney Dolphin film because it took um, nearly five years to make in wow. total. So I actually got a um, career progression throughout the film. <laughs> um, but I started off as the researcher and so researched a lot of the, the stories that we could and the characters that we could put into the actual film. Um, and having obviously, like I said, dived the Lembe Strait for a year and followed the peacock mantis shrimp around, I suggested that we go back and try and film a sequence and make it into a character for the actual film. So, uh, which we did. So That's cool. We filmed the peacock mantis shrimp in Lembe. We also filmed the broad club cuttlefish doing its um, passing cloud um, predation. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's incredible. I like, I yeah, I have a there. picture here that they really like uh, open their tusks. And then the, uh, yeah. the, the colors and flash, right? <laughs> amazing. It's like one of the most amazing behaviors I've seen underwater. And I, you know, I love cuttlefish and octopus. Uh, um, also an obsession of mine. And yeah, this hunting behavior um, I'd read about, but never tried it um, until we worked on the Disney film and, and found a method of um, instigating it to do its, its uh, hunting display. And oh, wow. it's just incredible. All right, cool. Well, we don't let that out because then our viewers will go all there like to cut a fish and then they just do that. So we don't say that. Yeah, no, secret, secret. <laughs> That's a secret. secret of the filming industry. Industry secrets. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. see, Mike already had a drink on it. Yourself. <laughs> We're going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you afterwards. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. And then Coconut Octopus, was that also like featured in, in uh, the Disney movie? No, um, that was um, unfortunately a character that we did film in Lembe and hoped to include, but um, 
it didn't quite perform well enough for us. I All think right. it makes a cameo. It makes one cameo shot in the film, which is in the uh, the murky place that the dolphins swim through, um, where it peeps out of its shell. But um, we didn't really get a good enough sequence with no them. No much action. Most, well, it was mostly because we had a, a pair of uh, uh, coconut octopus that were squabbling um, over um, their homes and kept stealing things off each other, which would have been hilarious to include, apart from the fact that one of them was a plastic cup and the other one was a piece of rubber tire. Yeah, yeah. Right. that doesn't go down well for, with Disney, right? With Disney is about no. the prettiness uh, and... With Disney, Natural. it's about human beings not existing right. on Earth. Yeah. So I wanted to include it because plastic is obviously a very um, yeah. uh, prevalent thing in the ocean now, and it would have been a nice little sign. But no, it's too pure. Disney is too pure. Yeah, uh, all right. It's like uh, I'm thinking like uh, now Blue Planet, uh, uh, like when they show like all the wow things, but then they had uh, like uh, behind the scene uh, eventually segments that they 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 bring in all the. Uh, concerns stuff about that didn't uh, make it. stuff that didn't make it but also maybe let's say the pollution things mm. and maybe they have like an entire segment saying like rising that awareness and they say okay we had problems with this in here problems with that in there and here so it's it's a reality that and um, I don't know yeah. the, the way that uh, my you know like I, when you said Disney I think uh, Dumbo you know Dumbo and uh, Lion King uh, like this and uh, so I'm thinking about this all this uh, prettiness out there <laughs> you know yeah sure yeah drama give driven by family drama rather than pollution you know Exactly. Yeah. I think um, one of the things we did do with the Disney Dolphin film mm. was, uh, and one of my main roles actually on it, was um, to film behind the scenes. Um, so we actually made a separate feature film, which I edit produced um, and filmed a lot of the content for on location. And oh. that comes as a separate feature film, almost as long as the 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 main feature film um, called Diving with Dolphins. And that does touch upon the conservation issues as much as we can. Um, talks about the plight of sharks. Um, we don't talk about plastic actually, yeah. um, but we do talk about just how- Fishing. Threats. Um, no, it's more about just protecting everything in the ocean. So okay. from the mantis shrimp to the shark, to the dolphin, they all, and the fish, um, they all play a very important role, but it's a very closed system. And if you take out just one of those species, the whole ecosystem collapses, um, which is quite unusual compared with on land where you, you can potentially take out one species and it may not affect as much. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure some scientists will probably tell me off for that, terrestrial scientists. <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna um, take out any species anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so it was more about how um, it's all part of one big system and you, you take something out, the whole thing collapses and it is collapsing and we need to really take more care about it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, this uh, feature film, uh, uh, Elephant and Dolphin, uh, and Dolphin Reef, uh, has been uh, recently launched, uh, wasn't it? Like uh, on April, um, beginning of April? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, it was launched. I can't remember the exact date. It was launched about two or three weeks ago, possibly three weeks ago. Um, Disney Plus have launched their new uh, online um, channel, which is to rival Netflix, yep. if I'm allowed to say that. Um, and um, they're actually offering a seven day trial. So there's no excuse not to go and see the Dolphin film, if I'm honest. Yeah, OK. Um, so we're going to link it in the description here. Oh, yes. yes. Go, um, it's free for now. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Go, it's free for now. And actually, I signed up for the free trial and actually decided to keep it because it's got all of my best and favorite Disney films and Pixar films on there. So, Which one is um, your favorite? Um, do you know, Finding Nemo. I, I love it. Finding Nemo. I knew it. Cliché, though. <laughs> <laughs> for, well, I, for an underwater cameraman, camera woman. Well, sorry. exactly. Well, I had to say that, didn't I? But I do also like um, Finding Dory. And I was a little bit kind of reserved about them doing um, a sequel. 
um because i normally hate sequels right. because they just i just think originals should stay as originals when they're really good but finding dory i thought was as brilliant as finding nemo so. i haven't seen it i haven't seen it either no. but now that you tell me that actually i have it here yeah, i have one of this little box oh, with everything yeah you must see it you must I've see seen it. finding Nemo okay. a million times but, same i'm yeah. not too fond of sequels when <laughs> uh, when you know like toy story that they made one two three four and i say i enjoyed the first one and then i said okay maybe i watch the second one yeah, but, but you watch all the star wars that's true exactly. that, that that's true but still the one that i enjoy the most is the first one <laughs> yeah but what i like about finding dory is they just take it to the next level with regards to conservation um, oh, that's good. messages in, involved with aquariums actually and um, captivity of cetaceans and um, they've got a very cool octopus in it as well okay. and that's all i'll say so how long did it take for the the dolphin film uh, actually how long is the film the, the feature film um i think it's about um maybe 78 to 80 minutes okay and how long yeah. how long was the actual filming process from start to end to finish a such a long film mm. so um we obviously have um we had about a year's pre-production which is when we um do all of the research behind the locations and this um, the characters we're going to film and and set it all up and then we filmed for two years um traveling to multiple locations to um, achieve what we could um to make it visually spectacular um, and then it was, I would say, a year, just over a year in the edit and the post-production phase, which is when we put all the music on and um, the narration and um, obviously edit the whole thing together. Right. So it's a big, it's a big old beast. Sure is. Um, yeah. And we actually finished the film um, over a year and a half ago. Um, but and the Disney nature films um, used to be released in cinema, um, but now that everyone is sort of um, more interested in watching um, online content from their living rooms, um, yeah. they decided to hold back the release of the film until they released the Disney Plus channel. So oh, okay. it's nice to actually see it finally on the on people's screens because it was yeah it was quite a long time ago we finished yeah. it so. Yeah, who knows where it will go, cinema, you know, like uh, now, especially during this crisis and we, we still don't do uh, gathering and things. And uh, I'm thinking like uh, also, let's say some major Hollywood uh, production that they should be released this year. Yeah, so they, like, might, uh, they might put them on uh, Are they going Netflix to release well? them or not? Yeah, or, or Netflix or, or like this. maybe this yeah. actually is the way to go. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely. actually showing the trailer here of, uh, and it looks amazing. Like that sequence with the dolphins in front of the humpback. Where was that shot? Uh, so we, um, so that was shot in Socorro. Um, Socorro, wow. Yeah, uh, which is one of the places um, we actually contracted someone um, to film it for us. So we didn't do a okay. shoot to Socorro. Um, but we did also witness it and we had some other shots which weren't quite as good as that one um, in Hawaii, which is where we filmed our humpback whales. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting this behavior eh, that the dolphin uses. We have a pictures uh, already we had like uh, two years in a row that a whale shark appears here in uh, Nusa Penida and he has a family of dolphins in the front of the whale shark. Mm. Remember that? Yep. Yeah. Also, when they, you know, we had a great white shark here appearing uh, last season. Did you? Yeah. What, off Bali? Yeah. yeah. That was big incredible. One. I mean, a big, big, great white shark, like Australian size. Did you get in the water with it? We weren't. Uh, we weren't there. But a it, lot of people saw it, like on their open water dives. It showed up in the most busy dive site where it could show. It showed up, like in Crystal Bay, where you, we see the, the Mola Mola. The, it just wow. showed up and it went viral on Facebook. Actually, probably if you do a search, you can still find it there. And it I think at that time, too, I had dolphins around. Did it? Yeah, oh. it, it had a few pictures with dolphins. Wow. Well, if it shows up again, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I, we'll I probably will be in the water. <laughs> hard, to, <laughs> hard to give a call. Before yeah. you get in the water, give me a call, yeah. and then I'll just fly out as soon as possible. You know, it's uh, once probably in a blue moon, but uh, like here, every now and then, some crazy things appears, uh, like uh, orcas 
and there was this picture of um, people surfing uh, down south in Uluwatu and there is a guy on the wave and an orca preaching behind him like wow. and they stayed around for three four days and uh, and we wow. were thinking you know like ah it's not gonna stay there and then the second day you're here it's still there and then you start to think ah okay tomorrow will be gone and then it's still there and uh, now i decided like when something like this happened we're gonna get on a speedboat and we're gonna go to try to find them <laughs> take our yeah. chances do you know what i my life would be made if i dived with orca I mean, that's it. I'd be done. I yeah. couldn't be. I could see anything else that would be as amazing. I would love to dive with Orca. I'm going to try at some point to do that during my career. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess not so far from you up in Norway. It's, it's the best place. Yeah, at the moment it is. Yeah, it's a bit cold up there though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know they're cold water sea sheets, but I was hoping I might be able to catch them in some warm water somewhere. And also on for the trailer sleeping. there, a second ago Sorry. there was some orcas. Where where were those filmed? Um, where did we, oh, they were in Australia, Ningaloo. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good place. Yeah. That's what I was saying before was, uh, in, uh, probably like in Norway, there is a problem with a little bit of a problem with the filming because it's very dark, uh, uh being winter. Yeah. Probably the, all the images, they look so dark. Yeah. And I think, um, um, also there are quite a few restrictions there now, aren't there? Because, so. um. There are too few many people jumping in the water with them in freezing cold conditions. Yeah, um, believe me, we hear that quite often. Mm. I'm, I'm watching over here like a, an incredible image that is very artistic of a manta ray, so it's a black and white uh, with... Uh, are they divers with the lights on the background? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I included that because I didn't take that during my job. It was actually a photo I took in the Maldives, but it's my favourite photo that I've ever taken. Um, and it was at night. It was a night dive. And um, yeah, it's all the divers' torches um, on the bottom. Um, and I was snorkelling on the surface and just managed to capture that shot, which Brilliant. I do like. So I thought I'd send it to you. Really, <laughs> really very nice light. I love that kind of uh, uh, portraiture. And mm, well, it, the, the manta ray was actually ran, the manta ray was lit from the boat. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I only I didn't use strobes because yeah. otherwise there was too much um, stuff in the water. Mm. But um, yeah, I just used the the natural the light from the boat shining down as if it was moonlight, I guess. And then yeah, and then the divers at the bottom, and you can't see the divers, so. Cool. Yeah, yeah, they, they created you that beautiful background, you know, like it gives you depth, you know, like all those yeah. lights and things. It's exactly. Incredible stuff. So when you guys would go on, can you can you let us know some of the locations that you did with the dolphins where you, you said Nengalu earlier, but what other locations did you go to? Um, so one of our main locations for filming the dolphins um, was in the Red Sea. Okay. Um, there's an amazing scientist out there who is um, also a very good friend of mine called Angela Ziltner. And she works for the, or founded the Dolphin Watch Al Alliance um, uh, in Haggadah in the Red Sea. And um, she does a lot of research, um, scuba diving with the dolphins there who are, incredibly habituated because of the amount of tourists okay. that um, snorkel and dive with them around those reefs. Um, so we got all the amazing behavior of dolphins um, sleeping, playing with coral, and also doing the Gorgonian rubbing, which is a new thing which Angela um, recently discovered only a few years ago, um, and has, has got some new um data results on which i probably am not allowed to talk about but um the idea is is that these dolphins swim through gorgonian corals um and if you touch a gorgonian coral which you shouldn't do very often but if you do just run your hands through it just quickly just to understand it they're very very soft and um dolphins seem to queue up and um swim through these corals and covering their whole bodies as they do it um, and they seem to be quite courteous with each other whilst they do it um, and it's believed and Angela is trying to prove um, that the Gorgonians have antibacterial properties oh. okay and so the dolphins, 
Yeah, so the dolphins are consciously, potentially, swimming through these gorgonians um, and need these gorgonians um, as a method of um, medicinal purposes or for antibacterial purposes to keep their, their skin um, free from infection. Very exciting. The only problem with it is that you can never really prove whether the dolphin understands the antibacterial properties unless we can talk dolphin. Um, a few scientists are trying to talk <laughs> dolphin. But they think they've managed it yet. <laughs> no, click, click, click. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah. have definitely they have a language. You remember oh, also we, we were talking uh, recently with a friend of ours, uh, Pepe, that is uh, an underwater photographer, and he was doing um, he was uh, portraying uh, one of the rescue dolphin uh, center up here in Bali, where they take dolphins out uh, from uh, the shows in the hotels and things and they try to rehabilitate them out and he was say that they go like uh, crazy in the language they were coming to him and and speak to to him did you have anything like this in this place where uh, uh, in uh, in uh, um, in red sea where uh, they are so used to people do they come to talk to you uh 100% yeah they're i mean they're amazing um and i was very privileged to um, have that kind of access for so long with them as well um, but because um, we often got the dolphins on the reef without tourists there obviously so it was just myself Angela and the cameraman Roger Horrocks um, in the water with the pod and they would stay with us sometimes for over an hour and they swim up to you and they squeak and they whistle and um, there's a few of them that they recognize Angela and they feel very comfortable with her in the water which is why they stay around um, but they could they could tell that Roger was a male even though we were all wearing wetsuits obviously um, because they have this x-ray vision so they could see certain things about him which me and Angela didn't have all right. um, <laughs> yeah, they're super good. But they, Roger they, seems pretty gifted there. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're listening, Roger. <laughs> oh, don't give him a big head. Don't give him a big head. Um, and yeah, and sometimes one of them would come and swim literally right next to me and we'd look at each other eye to eye and they'd blow like little bubbles and squeak and go sort of boop, 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 boop and then swim around you and come back and then come face to face with you and open their mouths and just kind of squeak and whistle. Um, and they, I'm sh for sure they're trying to communicate with you in some way. Yeah. Um, uh, earlier on, uh, I was showing a picture of uh, you with a camera in Bunaken and you were by a turtle. And uh, oh, yeah. actually in, uh, in uh, Bunaken Marine Park, I've seen already a few times when I was working there, a turtle going on top of sea fan and start to rub themselves and do that, mm. that back and forth. I don't know if it's the same reason or if it was just you would think like the shell of a turtle, I mean, it doesn't really feel like to, to be scratched by just a, a sea fan like that. So maybe they, Absolutely. they, they were picking I up something like uh, you just said now. Well, 100%. I think, um, you know, the coral reefs support most of ocean life. And just like a rainforest does with um, all of the animals and insects and everything else that lives within a forest, um, the coral reef provides a huge amount for all of the creatures that rely on it. And it makes total sense for them, to for the corals to um, provide for them medicinally, just like I know capuchins, I think, use certain plants to rub on themselves for mosquito yep. repellent um, and other things. So. Yeah, there is, there's so much that we're, we don't understand about how important coral reefs are to the ocean environment. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, if we destroy them, um, yeah. we, we're going to take out everything that goes with it. So, yeah, I'm, and, I'm and, sure. And by destroying them, we talk about that, like it sounds like maybe it's a direct destruction activity underwater, but it's not really like that. It's something that is happening because of global warming and so on, it's something beyond in somehow also uh, our direct control is the whole world needs to, to get together and stop em gas emissions and things, not stop, but reduce drastically that in order to, to, to save it. Like, how is the, the status of Red Sea? I, I, I used to work there uh, back in 2003 or so. How, I, by seeing the pictures around here, the, the coral reef still looks like in a, in a pretty good shape. How did you find that? <laughs> Where was that, sorry? The, the Red Sea, how is the... the, the, the 
Yeah, um, I the corals in the Red Sea were beautiful um, where we were, and especially compared with other areas of Indonesia, which is supposed to, you know, with the Coral Triangle, be some of the most amazing biodiversity in the world. And yet, I would say the Red Sea corals are um, by far more intact mm. and colourful than what you find now in the Indonesian area. Um, however, um, they weren't as fishy. So um, there wasn't that sort of huge diversity of fish. So you often had beautiful, beautiful, colourful corals, but um, only a few species of fish and not those sort of big shoals of colourful fish that you get um, in Indonesia. So, but yeah, I mean, in general, it's, it's quite well preserved. I think across the world again, um, and scuba divers, us included, have to be very aware that we are going underwater to look at the beauty of the underwater world. And yet we're probably one of the main culprits for destroying it firsthand with our yeah, the direct damage. Fins. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, in certain areas or where we were around Hagada, the coral reefs were, were beautiful. Yeah. Also in Red Sea, even if there is some uh, mass uh, tourism of diving, they are very, very uh, good in uh, giving the information out uh, to the divers uh, be careful don't do that don't stand on the coral if somebody sits on the coral they go there very angry to say no don't do that at least it used to be there like that when i was there i've done a lot of thin yanking in my time <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, will. so yeah, yeah that's allowed over there over here is a bit different you know like there is not that mentality unfortunately so, so sometimes yeah. uh, you have some maybe uh, guides that uh, just let do anything to their beginner divers and just crawl on a reef. Uh, not often, but occasionally you have that situation that I've never seen, oh. for instance, in Red Sea before. Yeah, absolutely. Here I see some uh, equipment that uh, probably you use during um, the, the film production. Of course, we see like a cinema camera over here, but also some interesting uh, camera in a pole. What sort of uh, rig is that? Um, so we used um, a couple of rigs actually for what we call pole cam, um, which is a way of um, putting a very high spec camera into an underwater housing attached to a pole that you hang off a boat and travel at a fairly decent speed of three to four knots in order to try and capture um, fast moving underwater uh, whales and dolphins yeah. <laughs> without... Yeah serving them in the water. Um, so yes, yeah, so with those, we made those um, out of various metal uh, materials and rigs. Um, yeah, they took quite a long time to make, but uh, we used uh, one of them specifically for uh, trying to film or succeeding in filming the uh, competitive pods of humpback whales in Hawaii. Oh, wow. Um, which was amazing because obviously I don't know um, how many people know um, that humpback whales, males gather together in um, huge numbers, sometimes up to sort of 30 individuals or more and have these kind of racing battles um, that no one really quite understands the purpose of, but it must be something to do with courtship and mating. And often there's a female at the front. So, um, you have the female sort of swimming at the front and then you have lots of males chasing her, but also kind of battering ramming each other out the way and trying to push each other under to try and get to the front, um, which is believed to be what's happening. It might be the one at the back's winning. You don't know, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> it's the marathon guy. The is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so to film these humpback whales that are traveling at speed when they're chasing each other in this way, the, you know, you can't put a diver in the water with them in that and follow them in that capacity. Right. So, um, so um, we made this very, um, yeah, it's very strong rig um, to hang off the side of the boat where we could basically uh, drive um, perpendicular to the uh the action but get pretty close and we had uh permits to do so right you're not supposed to, otherwise you wouldn't be allowed um and um using this pole cam underwater alongside the whales we could actually see them 
and what they were doing underwater, um, pushing each other down, ramming each other, blowing huge bubbles of aggression. Amazing. Yeah. So in which really film is this one? Because I want to go to watch that with. That's in the Disney Dolphin film, Dolphin okay. Reef. Definitely. Yeah. Seven yeah. days. And it, yeah. And it's also in the uh, Diving with Dolphins behind the scenes film where you can actually cool. see us rigging it and oh, using it. Did yeah. you guys have to bring your own boat or were you able to rig it to the boat that uh, whatever outfit you were using in Hawaii, you were able to just rig it to their boat? Yeah, exactly. We, um, we rigged it to their boat. It was a, a brilliant guy called Tad Lucky who has the Lucky Strike, which is his boat, which he often used for uh, deep sea fishing, I believe. But okay. we managed to convince him to let us drill a lot of holes <laughs> in his boat <laughs> to attach this rig. Awesome guy. So, yeah. yeah. And it must be, I mean, it must be pretty tough and solid because if you go with this camera, like, which is quite long, and you put it sideways, there is so much water resistance into it that it, you might just rip the whole thing apart you know exactly yeah yeah we did it happen it didn't happen no uh, we were worried it would but yeah the um the rig that we created was made out of um steel girders basically um and yeah we couldn't go over i think we couldn't go over sort of six seven knots otherwise we would have been in danger of ripping right. the yeah. the boat completely off <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible this uh hit and run that the humpbacks uh they do uh, and then the way you describe it is very similar maybe to what the mantas do too mm. is that you have uh, these manta trains and you have the the female that stays on the front all these male that they line up and then yeah. uh, apparently according to the manta experts it goes on for days this one until uh, like uh all um, most of male manta give up uh, and the one that is still there swimming after her decide okay now it's only you you are the winner <laughs> let's do it wow yeah. okay so it's yeah it's a test of endurance yeah, for them. yeah for, let's see yeah. who can last longer not the sprinters <laughs> the marathon people the marathon <laughs> whales yeah. oh you guys have a hard time don't you yeah <laughs> How long did you guys take in Hawaii to, to capture that? It could it, You wouldn't have been lucky just getting it on, oh, we're going to show up today and get it. It must have taken quite some time to get that scene. Um, yes. So um, we were out in Hawaii for six weeks. Wow. Um, but in that time, we did film a lot of the humpback whales in various capacities. So we filmed the mother and calf, um, which is the opening of our character fluke in the film which is okay. a baby humpback whale. um so we did a week with didier noiro who is uh was actually jacques Cousteau's first ever cameraman um on board the calypso um and didier was our humpback whale um filmer of cameraman for um the mother and calf and also he filmed a ballet which was kind of a stroke of luck in the second week uh, we were filming, we were trying to film just a singing male um, just hovering in the water and, and booming out their song. And as Didier um, swam down um, to meet it, um, two other whales actually just appeared out of nowhere and they did this amazing ballet, which no one understands either why they do this, but they dance together and twist around each other and really, wow. really beautiful. Um, so we filmed that, which was um, just a Brucey bonus. And, um, and then we spent the good part of four weeks trying to capture the competitive pods, both from an aerial perspective with a helicopter, but yep. also obviously from the boat, both from the surface and underwater. So it was a big old Amazing. process. Incredible is that, um, so we heard about this um, uh, competitive back uh, things happening and we heard it from Tonga and probably you you heard that from Tonga too right but Tonga yeah. is quite busy at the same moment and then you figured it out that uh, in Hawaii is happening the same thing right yeah so um we looked at Tonga and um actually at the time Hawaii had uh, greater populations of humpbacks within a smaller area um, and obviously in Tonga, there's a lot more tourism um, where people are allowed to jump in the water um, with the humpbacks. 
Um, whereas in Hawaii, it's a bit more regulated. Yeah. Um, tourism boats are only, they they can't they have to be more than a hundred meters away, I think, um, from from the whales and only see them from the surface rather than jump in the water with them. So we decided Hawaii was a better a better shout. Mm -hmm. But they're very similar um, with regards to humpback whale behavior. Right. That's just a question of getting permits in Hawaii because I'm sure it's a lot uh, a lot more strict with what you can do. Absolutely. And I think one of the things, the privileges we have as filmmakers is that we often join forces with local scientists um, and um, we utilize their research permits. Okay. And it's a sort of collaboration, really, because what we can film, for example, with our pole cam underwater um, is a new perspective that a lot of scientists obviously don't have the money to be able to um, rig those sorts of contraptions so we can then give them the footage that we film and they can then dissect it from a behavior perspective gotcha. and actually try and understand yeah. um, what's happening so um, they give us a filming permit through their research and we give them yeah. our footage yeah. and it goes well. Uh, very well together like you mentioned that also because the scientists have no interest in uh, let's say uh, broadcasting that sort of footage it's more like for their research that stay within their uh, uh, network you know it's not exactly brought out really to the public until there is a paper right exactly yeah, yeah. incredible it's an incredible story so like from basically from a bank you were working in a bank and then you decided that's it i'm gonna go in the nature you know that we are doing the project with the monkey in the forest and then <laughs> get into that di diving more and more uh, and then decided to switch to, to marine life, becoming a filmmaker, and uh, there you are. <laughs> Working for Disney. Working for Disney. Very inspirational. I don't Disney anymore. Yes, well, well, thank you. Yeah, I've, um, I think I've got this attitude of, um, if you really want to do something, just go and do it. Yeah. Um, and if you really try hard enough, you don't need to have the money, you don't need to be rich. Um, you just need to ask the right people to help you um and you can achieve whatever you want to is my mantra yeah believe um, in it yeah exactly if you believe in yourself and you believe if you really want to do something then you you can do it eventually it might take some hardships along the way and i certainly um went through some hardships to get to where i am now but um yeah very much enjoying being where i've got to and my career has only just begun, you know, I, um, I'm still an assistant producer, um, now working for Sky um, and a company, a different company in Bristol. Um, and we're working for Sky Nature, who have literally announced yesterday that they're launching um, at the end of next year. Um, and well, actually, they might be launching before that. But they've set up their own. Um, there's so many now. So we've got Disney Plus, we've got Netflix, we've got right. Sky Nature, um, their own channel. Um, and we're now making a three part series on sharks with um, a British uh, TV presenter called Steve Backshall, who uh, is very passionate about sharks and has done a lot of expedition series um, and as well as the Deadly 60s BBC series that he mm -hmm. did a while ago. So, oh, very cool. Yeah. So we're what? going to throw him in the water with lots of sharks. Can you let us know? Uh, is it public knowledge of where, which locations you're going to go to, or is that still under wraps? I can't tell you that, I'm okay. afraid. That's but, still under wraps. Yeah. So we will big, have to big, interview big again sharks. Big after, sharks. once it's been released, we interview again. Yes. And then we will... To be honest, we'll, we're, still, we're, still, um, we're still looking into where we can film. Right. Think, yeah, um, what's the situation right now? Because uh, probably like in still in January and February, you guys were making plans and now all the plans are shut. And uh, yeah. but now it's been yeah. like this for a while. So what what's going on with the production work? Uh, um, so in Bristol in general, I think most productions are not too worried yet. But um, for example, my shark series, uh, we were supposed to start filming in July and we have to deliver, or it's released, sorry, in November next year. Um, and we start the edit um, in April. So that means that we only have from July to March in order to film three part series on sharks around the world. 
and their conservation plight, which is quite a short period of time. Um, and obviously, because of this COVID scenario, we're not sure presently when we will be allowed to travel internationally. Mm. Um, and so we're trying to, I think, and that that's across the board, not just with my production. I think um, there are, it's a waiting game at this present time. Yeah. Um, there are, you know, murmurs that we might be able to start traveling. Uh, I'm going to, I got the COVID issue here. Are you right, Mike? I'm good. Yeah. You've got a touch of the COVID. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's okay. Something going we, we down the wrong. We have an invisible uh, layer of separation <laughs> in here that they like. <clears throat> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry for that. I was a li little bit distracted by that. But I guess my viewers were distracted too. I know. I was trying to ignore <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were very good. Like, <laughs> I, I kept going until I could go. <laughs> But now, um, sorry. So you, so w what, um, what you guys were thinking then? Now, after all this, yeah. So I, yeah, I think at the moment um, we're all waiting. Um, obviously, we're still in a lockdown scenario, but there are murmurs that potentially things might start to ease. Um, yeah, yeah. And we're we're all working off the assumption that international travel for us as filmmakers, at least, yeah. um, might be Possible. allowed yeah. from sort of September time onwards. Okay. Um, September. But, okay, that's good news. Well, it's good news. I think it's fairly optimistic. Yeah. Um, but I think at the moment we have to be optimistic. Otherwise, you mm. know, we wouldn't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's the same thing that we do over here. You know, but also, you know. Everybody's running out of uh, Netflix series and all these things to watch. So you guys have to, yeah. to to get on and produce more if these things goes on, you know, like. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think there's pressure from the commissioners that they still want their um, productions um as much as possible um, being released when they were supposed to be. But um, obviously our filming windows um, personally are uh, reducing, which. Yeah is slightly concerning. One of the things we're all looking into at the moment um, is that we would contract local camera crews yeah. to go and film um, natural history content for us um, if it's a case that that's what we need to do. Um, it's a bit trickier because we're a presenter-led series and yeah. we need our presenters the to presenter. be on location. So um, we do have natural history content with sharks, but mostly it's going to be presenter-led and contributor-scientist-led. So it's tricky for us. But at the moment, we're all holding tight and hoping that perhaps this mm, will blow over yeah. quicker than that's yeah. what we can do. I think every business is doing that, you know, like right now. Yeah, we are holding still and holding, but the time is passing. And, you know, like especially like yeah. today, I felt like, well, now it's been a while, you know, like, yeah. so um, we are we're still waiting. Really does it really look like around that we're making any step forward yeah. you know, somehow, you know, like we need that big news of something, you know. But yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, the most important is that travel starts to resume and I'm sure that you guys can take the right precautions, uh, you know, like fully suited, hazmat suit in the plane, then transport it. Oh yeah, that's no problem. I don't mind wearing all those things and wearing a face mask. I think our biggest um, issue is quarantines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially because our yes, well, our camera operators cost a lot of money, so um, we can't really afford to have them in two-week quarantines. Mm. Yeah, yeah, inside. that's a big one. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a fourteen um, days uh, of uh, yeah. Unless they let you do that on a boat, you know, like, uh, because uh, exactly. actually here there are already, let's say, some uh, uh, rumors that they say that, for instance, so let's say yachts coming over here, the person entering then is on the boat and can do the quarantine on the boat. So if you have your private boat, maybe that would be, let's say, a solution that you just need to be yeah. there and not in touch with anybody else, you know. Yeah, but exactly. I, the other thing would be, I guess, with with governments coming into going into foreign countries and things, getting filming permits and things like that takes yeah. time. And if governments are also bureaucrats are shut down, then that yeah. makes that even longer as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, absolutely. Yeah. For example, we're trying to organize permits for um, uh, I can't say the exact location. Right. Yeah. Uh, some country. one permit. Yeah. <laughs> Some isolated islands somewhere, um, and um, yeah, presently the government are not accepting um, any permits. Right. But 
we have a seasonal window to film what we want to film and um, we need to apply six months in advance. So yeah. unless we're allowed to apply for our permits quite soon, we will miss that seasonal window. Yeah, right. um, and and yeah, and then it's trouble. So yeah, to give you an idea yeah. of the level of uh, mess right now is that even here, like if you want to extend your uh, people that were here, let's say on uh, on a visa work permit or a work permit like this, even to renew those guys is becoming difficult. So imagine like if you come from 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 outside. Yeah. Uh, so, but changing my world. We need to keep to push for that and uh, as a private sector and uh, then the government I think will start uh, to to react maybe people in the states right now are taking this wrongly because <laughs> some big things is happening with protests and things I'm not saying that but I'm saying let's say professional work uh, entity that can travel safely and keep distances and permits and things we can, I think it's possible to do those sort of things yeah absolutely and i think you know i think we have to accept that this probably isn't going to just go away and we're not going to go back to normal so we do just have to come up with solutions yeah. long term that will allow us all to carry on as much as we can with our careers and our normal life right we need to adapt to it we need to adapt but i'm you know i i really hope that we don't go back to normal i really um I love what it's doing environmentally, this lockdown, and I really hope that governments and people um, in general recognise that it, it would be a real travesty for us to go back to where we'd got to. Um, mm. You know, a, a small virus is um, yeah. globally impacting us in every way, but the, the, the impending doom of climate change is a lot bigger um, and we need to really address that, and I hope that we do moving forward. Yeah, Great. and that's, uh, I think, a very good way to put it down. And uh, we definitely agree with that. And I think also it's a very good way to to finish this interview with you, which was uh, fantastic. Oh. Like, uh, thanks so much uh, for being part of uh, our little uh, live show here. And uh, was... Great. Thank you for coming up. Yeah, it was great. Like uh, really, really inspiring. And uh, definitely we're going to put uh, all uh, links uh, also like uh, your Instagram page and um, your uh, the links about uh, the Disney movie and how to sign up in there. And anything that you're going to send me over, I would be happy to put it out there in the description for our Thank viewers to go and click all over the place. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Ellen. You. Great to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hang on. And that was uh, Helen. Bye. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, look into the life and times behind a production. Yes. A proper production. Yes, very interesting insights and uh, also like some amazing photography. Like, did you see the Manta photo that uh, she brought up? Yeah. Like in black and white. I really, really, really loved it. It's incredible. Like, we go back uh, some time and then uh, that she was uh, like taking care of uh, this uh, NGO, uh, set, up, set up this NGO right. in Manado, taking care of uh, the macaque, the, yep. the black crested macaque. That if you haven't been watching, actually, Tancoco National Park is a great place. So if you visit, visit uh, Sulawesi, North Sulawesi, Manado, Lembe. Lembe, it's a great place to go and visit. We've been there for We've been uh, there a bunch three of times. nights, yeah. something like that. And as I say, we said during the interview, we placed uh, uh, Helen um, uh, links in the description of uh, this uh, show, which uh, the show itself will be a very soon available permanently. You know, I think it's already on our wall. Yes, now we are still live. But as soon as we stop, guys, don't worry. You can always track it back. It's gonna be on our Facebook uh, um, page, page. Yes. and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking forward to, have you have you checked out the dolphin uh, the dolphin reef one yet? I did not, not yet. since then, but I'm going to watch exactly. it because I'm gonna watch well. I want to see that hit and run from the handbag uh, that we were talking about. It's a seven day uh, free sign up. Yeah. So I think you still have to put in your credit card, mm -hmm. but you can cancel before the seven days are up, then you don't get charged. But yeah. uh, even one of the, someone was watching earlier and mentioned yeah, that already they, they are, uh, they subscribe to it and it's really good, lots of good stuff on there. Mm -hmm. So if you don't already have 14 different subscriptions, it's a good one to do. I think it'll have a good variety on it for sure. Yes. 
And then we also had a little bit of insight into the COVID uh, situation here oh. like, at the end. We need to adapt to it rather than think yes, I'm it's going to just Don't disappear. Don't worry, I'm still alive. Yeah, and Mike is alive. Actually, maybe that's what brought us into the, the conversation was your coughing. I am still alive yes. here from the side. Not a problem. Uh, so Mike uh, that brings us uh, to the end uh, also of uh, today's show of, show of show number 38 in a Monday and as I said uh, it will be also available for replay very very soon so if you just uh, uh, joined us uh, a few minutes ago you will be able to watch this from the beginning in a short uh, moment guys if you're not uh, following us on uh, Facebook yet uh, please hit the follow Please like and share this show and leave a comment when you watch it. It's always good and help us actually to spread the love for the ocean. Spread the with, show out. With more, more people out there. Yep. Yeah. And don't forget, we are also on YouTube. We have also different content on YouTube than what we show you on uh, uh, Facebook. So make sure also to subscribe. And our there. Instagram as well. We'll and put Instagram. daily stuff out on Instagram. Are we on Twitter too? We are. We, don't we are do, on Twitter too. Twitter is more news yeah. stuff for we us. We do but, tweetish. You know, if you look at our we Instagram, we got lots there. of videos and photos out there every day. Mm -mm. Yeah. And we're looking for any Bali updates about uh, what's the situation going on here. So here are in going, Bali? Yeah. Are we going back in the water soon? Who knows? It's all... Some say yes, some say no. Today actually really know. was 15 June. It was supposed to be like one of those milestones out there reached uh, that things will change. And the news was nothing, nothing, has, changed. nothing has changed. Everything so, has been who postponed. Knows? Who knows? Yep. One of these days we'll get back out there diving. We haven't gone diving since March. Mm. Yeah. My ears are ready. It's a long time now. Your ears are ready? Yeah, I was thinking, you know, be. like out of all this uh, thing, finally I gave a break to my ears mm. after 20 years. And you think <laughs> you remember what you're doing when you get back in the water? Yeah, like this. You, you, your first tank of air where you usually would last 80 minutes, you're going to last 60. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Too so excited? Sorry. It's time to do like uh, some uh, mind thing. I'm um, happy meditation. that you guys enjoyed the show also today. And uh, we're coming up uh, with more Wednesday and Friday. So Wednesday, we're going to have... Wednesday, like, we got Kay Berlin. Kay Berlin with some incredible footage that he shot. In yeah, another... Little spoiler. Production. Uh, Guadalupe. Production, instead of the production team, now we're we've got some a cameraman sharks, from the production team. So. Some humpbacks. Yep and some very interesting clips uh, and then we're gonna have a cracker on friday a with, cracker wow uh, do you like a that? cracker interview a cracker on friday with uh, richard pilde and brian green yes and some These also deep, some deep, very nice videos deep divers we're talking if you're american we're talking four or five hundred feet if you are not american we're talking 100, 100 to 130 meters these guys are down there mm. looking for new species of fish yes and they also go on a submarine and they also do a lot of helium. So mm -hmm. be ready to hear some helium talk on Friday. Yeah. Great folks that we keep interviewing. Yes. Yeah. And while we are coming here live and coming with the week already with like a, quite a prepare, how you say, timeline or so on, we right. also keep coming more and more interviews. So you, we're going to still stick around for a while. We do. We've got a we got a lot of people in the, in the backlog. Yes, in the, in the backlog in the archives here. Will we make it to fifty? But we're also going to start doing some different things as well. Mm. So uh, I think if you guys have any input that yeah. you would like us to do, we want to you know instead of just bringing you interviews each time, we're going to try and start doing a little a uh, few different things like maybe some photo classes, some video tips, photo tips, all that kind of stuff. So if there's anything out there that you would like to see us do, you would like to see us talk about, you would like to see us present, then uh, please put some comments either in the, in the comments now or, yeah. or, send, or us send us a direct message. Send us a message there yeah. on Facebook and let us know what you would like us, uh, what you would like to see from us in the future. Yeah. Uh, let's do not forget. Let's not forget. That let's not forget there. that we actually can take some photos also, some Whoa. videos. No, no, no. <laughs> Mike, award winning underwater photographer. There's no more Come photo on. taking, it's only computers. Come on, we need to put you there with a little statue in the hand ah, too. I so should. we're I gonna should. tell you congratulations. I don't actually have a statue. You don't have that yet. I should have a statue. You also have a paddy award somewhere. Yeah, uh, you'll yeah. get one of them. Uh, maybe, maybe That's a partition. it's been delayed That's because a participation of COVID. award. Yeah. Thanks for sending us money for 20 years. Here, 
Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Well, talking about money, guys, if you would like to support the Underwater Tribe here it's in Bali, good. we place a few links in the description. Is where you read about the coffee sections over there. And you can click those links and it's very easy with a credit card, a Visa or MasterCard. You can send uh, like a small donation to us uh, to support uh, not only Mike and uh, Luca over here, but all our dive guides uh, and drivers uh, and team behind us. Uh, team that, behind the uh, scenes. We are then in standby to welcome all of you back soon here in Bali. Exactly. Okay, or soon. in Indonesia. Soon. Somewhere. All over Indonesia. Yeah. It was great to see another uh, very nice crowd also during this uh, live show, yep. guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for popping into the comments, asking questions and comments and all that stuff. Always great to... Uh, it's our actual social period every two days. Yeah, it is. We it don't is talk indeed. to people other than this. And then uh, was uh, again, once again, thanks to Helen Samson for making this uh, show with us. Uh, was great to have you here. And the interview was very, very nice. All right, guys, that's it for today. And we're going to see, see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. See you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.